Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome back to Kalima Tayyiba series. This is the beginning of the month of Rabi'u al-Awwal and it's a very special month. Do you know why? Because it's the month when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born. Today we'll talk about the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and about his birth so we get to know him better. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes from the most noble and respectful family. They lived in Bilad al-Hijaz, which is a region in the west of the Arabian Peninsula, specifically in a village called Umm al-Qura, known today as Mecca al-Mukarram. The grandfather of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from his father's side was named Abdul Muttalib. He was the head or the leader of Mecca, and he had 10 sons. Most of them worked in commerce and traveled from Mecca to Bilad al-Sham and Yemen. Bilad al-Sham are the countries in the region of Syria. So they used to travel there to do business and trade goods. So the family of the Prophet وسلم, was very rich, but not only rich in money, but also rich in their manners and in treating others. They were known for their unique generosity and hospitality. They actually spent most of their wealth on the poor and the needy, and they honored their guests, especially those who came to visit the Kaaba. And you know the Kaaba is the first house of worship established for mankind on earth. You know, all the mosques or the masjids are houses of worship, but the Kaaba is special because it is the first house of worship built for all humanity on earth. And who built the Kaaba? It was Prophet Ibrahim and his son, Prophet Ismail And all Muslims pray to the direction of the Kaaba. So back to the grandfather of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was called Abdul Muttalib and he was the leader of Mecca where the Kaaba was built. And he had 10 sons who worked in business. Now let's get to know the parents of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The father of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was named Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib. Bin means son. So Abdullah, the son of Abdul Muttalib was the father of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was the youngest among his nine brothers and the most beloved to his father, Abdul Muttalib. His brothers were all worthy and outstanding, but Abdullah was the most distinguished among them and the most special. When Abdullah grew to be a young man, his father, Abdul Muttalib, began looking for a virtuous bride for his son to marry. So he wedded him to a young lady who came from an honorable and respectful family. Her name was Amina bin Wahab. So now you know the mother of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Her name was Amina, and she is the daughter of Wahab, Amina bint Wahab. And her father Wahab was the head and leader of Medina. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a descendant of nobility from both his mother and his father's sides, since both of his grandfathers, Abdul Muttalib and Wahab, were the leaders of their people. Abdul Muttalib, the leader of Mecca, and Wahab, the leader of Medina. Abdullah married the noble Amina in the city of Mecca, which is one of the most sacred places in the world. They lived there close to the Kaaba and all the people of Mecca were happy and delighted about this blessed marriage. Shortly after, Amina became pregnant. And during Amina's pregnancy with the Prophet وسلم, Abdullah who was a merchant, traveled from Mecca to Syria on a trade trip with his brothers. On his way back, he fell ill, and he could not resume his trip back to Mecca with the rest of the caravan. Instead, he stayed in Medina with his uncles to undergo medical treatment. Now, why didn't he go back to Mecca with the rest of the group to be treated there? It's because he was very ill and unable to keep going. When the caravan arrived to Mecca without Abdullah, Abdul Muttalib, his father, became very worried about him. And so he sent his eldest son, Abdullah's brother to go check on him. When Abdullah's brother arrived to Medina, Abdullah, the father of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, had already died. Everyone was very sad, especially his father Abdul Muttalib, who loved him dearly, and his wife Amina, who was eagerly waiting for her beloved husband to return. So basically, Abdullah died when Amina was still pregnant with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when the Prophet was born, he was already an orphan. I know we're all sad to hear that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was an orphan, 
But you need to know that when Allah loves a person, he suffices them until they no longer need anything nor anyone except Allah. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Habibullah, which means the most beloved person to God. So Allah rewarded and compensated Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with so much love to the point that he never needed anyone's love or care anymore, not even his parents, because he had God's love and care. You need to know that Allah creates everything. He creates people and he creates their feelings and emotions. So it is Allah who created our mothers and fathers. And he also created the love that they have in their hearts towards us. So Allah creates our parents and Allah creates the love that they have for us. Now Allah the perfectly wise, Al-Hakim, for some very wise reason, took away the father of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But Allah compensated Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he created the feeling of fulfillment and love in his heart. Allah is so kind and so loving that he gave Sayyidina Muhammad love and affection that no other child has ever felt. Now, there's a very important concept that we need to understand. Life is sometimes good and filled with blessings, and sometimes it is hard and filled with tribulations. And God loves us irrespective of the state we're passing through. If it's a state of blessings, Allah wants us to be thankful. And if it's a, if it's a state of hardships or tribulations, Allah wants us to be patient. But in all cases, Allah loves us. So the people whom Allah loves are very lucky. And we ask God to make us among them. Because the people whom Allah loves, irrespective of the situation they're in, even if they're passing through difficulties and hardships, they feel blessed and close to Allah. And even if they're alone, they will not need any human being because they have God's love and care. Now, after nine months of pregnancy, Amina gave birth to the child long awaited by all existence. The day Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was born was the most awaited day in the history of mankind. He was born on a Monday of Rabi'ah al Awwal in Mecca al Mukarramah in the year called the Year of the Elephant, also known as Amul Fil. When the people of Mecca first knew that the Prophet وسلم, was born, they were very happy. Abdul Muttalib, his grandfather, was the happiest one of all. He had been waiting for the birth of his grandson for so long. When he first saw him, he held him tight, brought him close to his heart, and headed straight to the Kaaba. He walked around it seven times to, to express his gratitude and thankfulness to Allah for granting him this blessed child, and he named him Muhammad. Now, why did his grandfather choose this name in particular, Muhammad? It was God who actually inspired Abdul Muttalib to name his grandson Muhammad. Because among all mankind, Muhammad, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was going to be the most thankful to Allah, the person with the most hamad to Allah, as his name indicates, Muhammad. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was also going to be Mahmud, which means that all creations on earth and in the skies, as well as angels, we're going to thank him and praise him for his noble manners and your unique characteristics. Muhammad is the one whose abundant noble manners are worth being thanked for and praised. So it is Allah who gave the Prophet the name of Muhammad. And ever since, he granted him his love, protection, and affection. Now, who nursed Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he was born? First, his mother Amina nursed him. Then Thuwayba, who worked for his uncle Abu Lahab, so they both nursed him for a short while. Afterwards, for the upcoming two years, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was nursed by a woman from the family of Bani Sa'ad, and her name was Halima Sa'adiyya, and she nursed him in an area in the desert outside of the city of Mecca. Now, I'm sure you're wondering why Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was nursed by a woman other than his mother, and why it was outside of Mecca. Back in the days, Arabs preferred sending their newborn babies to an area in the desert for the clean, fresh air and the eloquence of the Arabic language the people there were known for. So the children who grew up outside of Mecca became physically strong, healthy, and articulate in the Arabic language. That's why when Halima came from the desert looking for a child to nurse, her heart was immediately filled with love and affection when she saw the Prophet ﷺ, and she instantly decided to look after him. And when she got his mother's approval, 
Halima took him with her to where she lived in the desert to nurse him and look after. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, remained with Halima until he was weaned and strongly built. So two years later, Halima returned him to his mother back in Mecca. His mother Amina was very happy to reunite with her child. However, an epidemic was beginning to spread in Mecca at the time. And his mother, who was very concerned and afraid he would get sick, asked Halima to take him back with her for his own safety. Halima, of course, was very happy and could not hide her joy when she knew that the blessed child was going back home with her. So Prophet Muhammad وسلم, grew up in the desert in the land of Bani Sa'ad, and he was raised with Halima's children. He fed, guarded, and herded sheep, and lived a very simple life while learning the essence of the Arabic language. After a few months, Halima took him back to his mother in Mecca. And when he was six years old, his mother decided to take him to Medina so he can meet his uncles, her brothers, for the first time and also to visit with him his father's grave, which was also there. His uncles from Bani Najjar loved him tremendously, and his stay in Medina was filled with joy and laughter. He met many little boys his age and had so much fun swimming in a well that belonged to his uncles. After the visit to his uncles ended, his mother took him to visit his, his father's grave. Amina cried so much for how much she missed her late husband. When Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, saw tears of sadness running down from his mother's face, he was so touched and he felt a lot of mercy and compassion towards his mother. Although he was only six, he felt content because he accepted what Allah chose for him. He always had a bright smile on his face, which uplifted the spirit of anyone who saw him. This month is the month of Rabi' al awwal when our beloved role model, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was born. It's his birthday. So let's send him gifts and strengthen our connection with him by repeating, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sallam. This is the end of our lesson today. Next time, inshallah, we will learn together exciting facts about the exceptional story of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'll see you soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.